okay first of all you should get this key you know, that we will be using over here and then after getting that key the different yeah. side Now we have to take this, which is merging with this. Okay. And this one. Yeah. This be Connect? Connected, yes. Without this, it will not work. Mm -hmm. So you should have this with you. Okay. And then now you should turn on the instrument. It takes a long time? No, no, I can't. Yeah. Okay. It's going off to the back side. Yeah. So these are the two wires. This is from yeah. okay. okay. And then these two wires all together connected together. And these two all wires connected together. And that can do it with respect to some reference, but I'm not using any reference. Yeah. I'm using directly, okay? So to connect your sample, you we should have this. Like this. Yeah. 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 Okay. Your sample should be here now. Okay. Yeah. Put your sample between these two terminal units. Samples. Yeah. Okay. Two terminal. Your sample will have, will have two terminals. So any terminal you can connect it with this. Like this. Yeah. Like this. Okay. So, uh, depending upon the sample. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Make sure that this should not touch. Okay. Yeah. So this should be separated. Make sure. That. Uh, using mat on here. Yeah. yeah. This should not touch. Otherwise, there will be shock. Okay. So and now, okay. Program. Yeah. Now it's program. Now, if you wanna uh, calculate the, you know, if you wanna plot of the cyclic voltammetry, CV curve if you want, then you can click on this, store way, part, okay, yeah, experiment, first in the experiment, and then insert new setup, and then you need to do it with this, which, which feature you want to have, cyclic voltammetry you want, or, uh, uh, any kind of study you can do with this, depending upon so many parameters. Okay. This time you will be doing the CV voltagram, cyclic voltage, and then you will be doing it okay. And then okay, and then here you can put the, all the values. And then after putting this all the values for the vertex poten vertex potential that will depend upon uh, how, uh, at what voltage you should apply to your uh, terminal, that is 
This point actually, this point and this other vertex potential are just two things that we should select from here. Uh, uh, depending upon your sample, it could be uh, and anything, depending on your concept, for example, in most of the cases, any any range you can select. So you can also select minus 0.5 to plus 0 0.5 say for example and I'm doing it with respect to open circuit I'm not using the references but you can also do it with some references also and all the both should be same open circuit open circuit and then scan rate this is very slow scan rate I think you can also do it at 2 uh, 2 millivolt per second but that will take very very long time so uh, let's do it at this time at 50 millivolt per second and number of cycles uh, let's, let's try take only at 2 to 2 or 3 to get more stable data you should select the uh, final cycle ok so now here is the option uh, usually you need not to change delta C method acquisition that is supplying the uh, voltage versus the current data and then how uh, how close you want to take your data millivolt per point so how close your data should be and what in which form you want to save your data you want to save your data all cycles because you selected three cycles so if you want to save all cycles then you should click here all cycle data it will be saved data will be saved in whenever you will save your data or your last data but usually uh, you should take last data because it is most stable one because in the first cycle or second cycle or third cycle may not be that much stable so you can try up to five cycles or so uh, so it will save the data in the last cycle data it will save it will not save all the data also if you want to study the stability study of your sample then you can also do it at 1000 or 10000 cycles you can save so you can you can save all the data depending upon uh, what is your requirement if you want to record all data then you can take all all cycles otherwise it will save only the last cycle so for the time being i'm just i will just do only say for example five cycle i will do and then you need not to do any, nothing no uh, other things you need to make and it will give you plot I versus E, the current versus voltage plot will be given and then you just need to put it ok uh, ok we didn't make a save uh, we didn't save this ok yeah. ok uh, later it will give the option I think yeah. ok uh, then here is the start option uh, also there is one more point if you want to check the dimensions of your uh, your uh, super capacitor or capacitor then you can if you have different dimensions depending upon the if your surface area is different surface area of your sample if it is uh, different more than one then you can enter that value uh, we don't change the other parameters generally so the other are default parameters so the only thing is that you can change is that, uh, depending upon your surface area so you can change the surface area the other things we don't change the other things that, uh, other are default settings so just click it and then you need to start you just start a measurement selected then you can start the measurement by just clicking over here uh, the measurement will be started soon ok now it is I started the measurement and it, is, it looks slow because now we have selected 50 
so because it is perfectly overlapping so we cannot see it clearly Excel points, and you can do it in this way. Uh, you just go to Notepad, and then open the file that you saved already. We saved it into the D folder, and the okay. Uh, here you can click. This is our file, the saved file, and then you just open this, and your data will be. Uh, uh, transferred into this notepad. You can save this notepad. You can see the data. Uh, here is the data. Here is your data points. Uh, to find the EAS data plot, we should click on this Z plot, and then another window Z view. So, depending upon your sample. We should enter the values here and AC amplitude and AC potential is generally zero with respect to the open circuit. If you are using reference then you need to change the DC potential also. But right now we are doing it with respect to the open circuit only. And I have set for my sample, I set this AC amplitude to 10. And initial frequency and final frequency, it also again depends upon your sample. So in this case, I am using uh, 350, 100,000 as of initial frequency that is very high frequency and final frequency as 0.1. So uh, the other parameters you can change depending upon the surface area of samples. The other, other parameters you may default and you can just click it OK and, and then uh, you should for starting the measurement you should click here so click here and then measurement will start and you can see the progress here it will show how much percentage of measurement has been completed so it will take few seconds to complete the measurement okay in this picture you can see the three different plots so in this side this is the Nyquist plot where you have this uh, real part and imaginary part the resistance and then see, these are the uh, body plots which one is the phase diagram yeah. and now you can see the measurement has started and here you can see the measurement so the body plot, a diagram has started and here also because this range is very large so your data is already focused on here so we will magnify it to check the progress of your data and how your data is working so we can magnify that by selecting it okay here you can magnify okay. You can see that your data is going like this, your Nyquist plot is like this and similarly you can magnify the other data plots so that you can see them after magnifying. So here, if you magnify this then you can see the corresponding change in this plot also. So finally you can check the progress and it shows that uh, around 90%, 98% you know, 
is almost finished. After it completes, the pop-up window is appearing over there, and we can save the data here. So let's call E I S S or E I. Okay, let's S S, and we can save this data. Uh, location, okay. Any random location we can give. And save. And you can here you can put any comment at what what was your frequency and all that. So you can just click this okay and uh, your data is now completed. And now again the same way you can uh, export your data as we already discussed in case of uh, the CV data. see the frequency and corresponding amplitude and then bias and then time and this, this data is like this so this, these are the uh, parameters which show that which data it belongs to this and you can export it into excel file so that's uh, okay there is one more thing and if you want to play more with this data if you want to uh, an equivalent circuit and you can also uh, use the equivalent circuits that corresponding to your uh, data because uh, uh, this for this circuit for this plot you can fill any kind of circuits depending upon which circuit is most suitable for you and this is how you can calculate your R, R1 and R2 and corresponding capacitance depending upon this, this plot. So that's, that's all for the EIS measurement. Uh, you, can, uh, you can plot an equivalent circuit of your plot depending upon the values. If you put some values over here, and then you can get the uh, equivalent circuit and corresponding values of those uh, those parameters R1, R2, R3 and C1, C2 and if you put this value and this, these values overlap this curve that means your equivalent circuit will be like this so depending upon your, your sample the equivalent circuits could be uh, different ok so you can select many uh, many other uh, parameters or many other parameters depending upon your sample so you can uh, drag and plot with whichever parameter is applicable to your sample but I think for this particular geometry your equivalent circuit could be of this kind and you, maybe you can run a kind of simulation depending upon this plot so this is, if you fit this value, you can get the correct values of all these parameters okay, corresponding to this circuit. So that's all for the EIS measurement. Thank you. There is one more important thing that you need to remember that whenever you uh, start the CV measurement, you should uh, never change the GPIB settings. Because if you change the GPIB settings, then your system may not work well. And this GPIB setting is uh, set by the backside keys. Here are the keys. If you during on off, if you uh, if you change this key, then setting of your equipment will be disturbed so make sure that when you turn on and turn off the system you should not touch the GPIB keys so, so remember that you, this setting should not be changed so you need not to change this default setting the only thing you whenever you want to start experiment you just go to experiment and insert new experiment and do 
whichever uh, study you want to do this is this is very important to know because if you change the setting then this this uh this usb and this connection will be show always the failure so you should not change the off is simple you just need to go to the uh, back side and then And then you should switch it off. Okay, it is shown that power on and power off. And then you have to remove this key, very important. And then hold this. And then that's all. And you should take out your sample. Switch off and you should turn it off. Okay, always use this and and this and this USB cable wire over here and close and put this back into the disk box. 